Hey folks, and welcome to Typology, the show in which we explore the mystery of the human personality through the lens of the Enneagram. And before we go any further, I'd like to welcome the gardener, Ian Morgan Cron. Ian, how are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> For those of you not watching but listening, Ian had on his killer straw hat. Well, I'm out there growing tomatoes, man. Come on. I'm busy. Yeah, tell us about those tomatoes. What else do you have in the garden? (laughs) (laughs) Are you trying to get me arrested? (laughs) Hey, we've got, this is a great show. I mean, we've had some back-to-back amazing shows, and uh, we have some great guests today. You want to tell our our folks about those guests? Yeah, you know, sometimes, here's the thing about podcasts. You mm-hmm. never know what's going to happen, mm-hmm. right? Sometimes you, you, you have folks on and it's good. And other times you have folks on and it just gets a little magic, you know. And, and this was a magic interview, right? Mm-hmm. We, we had uh, pop star Tori Kelly and her husband Andre Murillo on. And uh, both of whom are familiar with the Enneagram. She's a four. He's an eight. And I got to tell you, right out the gate, it went deep. Mm-hmm. That's right. It went deep. We got under the hood right away. Man, and I just didn't want that conversation to end. So let's get it started. I'm going to put my gardening cap back on. <laughs> yeah. And I'm sorry to the tomatoes while everyone listens. All right. While you're doing that, everyone enjoy Tori Kelly and Andre Murillo. Typology guest today is a first. We have an Enneagram 4 pop star and an Enneagram 8 professional basketball player on our show. Tori Kelly and Andre Murillo, welcome. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Happy Hello. to be here. <laughs> Man, we have been looking forward to this interview for a long time. We are fans. And I want to start off by asking you a question we ask everybody when they come on the show, which is, how did you first learn about the Enneagram? So I got introduced to the Enneagram through a friend um, who, who happens to be a four as well, as I, find, I found out later. But she, um, she and I just connected on a lot of different things. And then so she, she introduced, you know, the Enneagram to me. And I took the test. and I was like, oh, my gosh, this makes so much sense. Hmm. Why are this way? And um, I just found it to be a really great tool just in life and then later on in uh, even in our relationship and just giving a language to some of the things I was, I was already feeling. So, and then actually she not only introduced me to the Enneagram, but introduced me to your book. Um, so I'm, I'm definitely a fan and uh, your book just opened my eyes to so many things. And I think not only helped me understand myself better, but also the people around me better and gave me more uh, empathy even to, to what other people, you know, just the way that their personalities are. Hmm. Okay, so when you, you began to learn about what it means to be a four, and Andre, I have bad news for you. I'm a four, <laughs> and, An- and Anthony is a four. You, <laughs> you are outnumbered today. By the Hilarious. Way. Outnumbered. <laughs> this, is, this is definitely a three-on-one day. I'm so <laughs> sorry, man. <laughs> well, if there's any personality type that could try to <laughs> handle it, I guess, <laughs> eight, right? Eight, That's eight. right. Yeah, <laughs> you're going to be all right. I, I trust. So, uh, Tori, when you were just talking about, it, you said explain so many things. Tell me one or two things that it opened your eyes to that were maybe very helpful and maybe also kind of ooh feeling, you know? Yeah. I, well, that alone, just just realizing uh, that you know the enneagram is meant to. I think you said it in your book as well. Just it's meant to shine a light on not just the positive things about you, but also the negative things that should make you want to work on yourself and get better. And I, I really resonated with that because, you know, there's not to downplay any other personality tests, but I just, I found myself seeing all these different ones that was like, you're awesome. You're great. These are your, you know, great qualities. And I was like, yeah, but I also like, I know that I suck sometimes. (laughs) And so um, it was, it was really cool to, I think, just see, um, you know, for example, some of the things that I would be hard on myself for, um, one of the big ones was 
if a friend was hurting and going through a really hard time, I would feel guilty for not having the right thing to say. Like I, mm. I would like, be really hard on myself and be like, ah, oh, I'm always, I, I just never know what to say. I, you know, I'm just, I'm only good for writing songs. I never know like what to say. I just put it all in my music. And uh, when it comes to like talking and interacting, I just, I'm the worst. And so reading about my, my, uh, Forness, I guess, <laughs> and one of the one of the things like, that helped my confidence and just um, you know not being so hard on myself was realizing that sometimes it's okay to not say anything. Sometimes people just want you to be in their pain with them and just you know not have a fix for everything. So that was that was I think one of the um, highlights that I that I sort of took with me. Um, and was more gentle with myself. And on the other hand, you know, there there is a time to speak up and and say things. So I think I was I was challenged by that as well. And just reading all the different types mm-hmm. and sort of pulling from from the different types as well, and seeing all the strengths of every uh, each of the nine types was helpful as well. And mm-hmm. picking out you know qualities in my friends and where I'm like, oh, that's so cool. Like I want to celebrate that in you. That's wonderful. And Andre, what about you, man? Like what, when you read about eights, what was a surprise that was great? And what were some of the things you learned about the eight that kind of made you grimace a little bit? Yeah. Uh, I think there was a part about the eight that struck me, which was um, just the, I guess the, the challenge, the challenging nature of an eight or the confrontational nature of an eight um you mentioned there's there's a protection mechanism that goes on with that um a boy who wants to be accepted or a kid that wants to be accepted deep mm-hmm. down and that struck me uh, really to the core in a tearful way actually and mm-hmm. and just uh understanding myself a little bit more and also just realizing as a believer as someone who believes that they're loved by god i don't have anything to prove mm-hmm. um, i don't have to do that from that motivation but at the same time also uh the the positive and the negative but i'll I'll just focus on the negative side of it is that scene that you painted in that book about um the eight in the family oh my daughter yeah yeah that's right um who who would go to bat for her brother (laughs) and uh there was there's a discussion that someone brought into the dinner table in a very confrontational way that could sort of make people feel a little sub- oppressed maybe by, by the, the confrontational nature of it. Um, that wasn't something I was always aware of. I, I didn't realize how unique that might be uh, to, to just be feel, actually feel intimacy and connection from discussion and disagreements mm. and, and figuring out uh, maybe in a, in a debate, what, what we find common ground on and what we don't. And, to, to realize that I actually can make people feel uncomfortable when I do that and that it's not everyone's nature um, was, was really educational for me. And, and, and to be honest with you, when Tori came and learned about the book and, and learned, learned about her friend's um, stories as, as it relates to the Enneagram, I was a little hesitant about it from the onset because for me, I had a big life shift when I was 20 years old and becoming a, a Christian. And, and I took that and ran to Bible college. And I, I guess in the arrogance of youth and also just a new believer, I sort of thought everything I need to know and need to learn, I was going to learn at this place. Yeah. And um, as is common with some people that I was doing life with, there's there's sort of this fearful resistance towards something that might further spell something out or uh, new information that we've learned besides what the Bible's teaching. And so so it was a really good sort of revolutionary thing for me to dive into and understand um, some of those things that have really helped in, in, in a lot of ways. Yeah. Yeah. I think eights typically struggle with black and white thinking yeah. uh, as ones do, right? So either something is really good or bad, or it's us versus them, or this is the only source of truth. This is not anything else besides this is not a source of truth. In fact, maybe represents a threat. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that's pretty, pretty common in ace. But, but Andre, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with you for a second. When I hear an eight say, it struck me to the core, this idea of a little boy inside 
uh, wanting to be accepted. Could just elaborate on that for me for a second. Like what yeah, experientially? I mean, you know, I was watching the uh, Michael Jordan documentary and he said something in his reflection of as you get older, you sort of start to learn about how you became the person you were. And I feel like that's exactly the chapter I am in right now, just having turned 30, sort of thinking about how have I become the way I've become. And a lot of that had to do with anger most of my life and anger problems. And and um, so, so that in tandem with learning about the eight and how that can be an outlet for, for an eight, um, and that boy that you're trying to protect in doing those actions. I just started thinking about the times of that very thing when I when I was a boy trying to trying to find acceptance. And I really feel like that was most of the narrative of my childhood is just growing up, kind of being a little bit annoying and loud, disturbing others in class consistently, getting that mark on my report card and just sort of trying to find my way in social settings to where I could maybe become a little less annoying as I as I get older and older. Um, and so that was one way of just wanting to be that boy that is accepted in social circles. But also also uh, bullying. There's some instances of, of bullying that stick out really clear in my mind from when I was a kid who didn't have control of the situation. Or I was a 12-year-old rooming with a couple of 15-year-olds who who actually really bullied me at this basketball camp that I try to bury and sort of push away out of my, out of my memory, only to revisit that and realize that's a situation where I felt, felt really, really out of control. One of a few uh, where I really felt out of control. And internally, I was raised by my father, who was uh, a military guy, football coach, to not let that happen. So those two that experience and the way I was raised were in such conflict that I vowed to never let those things happen again. And as I grew older, maybe I took on the bully role um, um, in, in effort to, to suppress that side of things. So there's all these messages I think that you receive as a kid that can communicate to you that you need to earn um, the love in order to be accepted here. And uh, my parents didn't ever do that. They're amazing and, and have supported me and loved me well, but there's definitely experiences in social settings um, where, where I felt like I wasn't enough and I, this is what I needed to do to be enough. And I think anger at, at its worst, the worst side of that would be, would be an ang anger, uh, rage or a fit that I'd throw. And, and um, <clears throat> when I read that, it, there's some, I, I've learned to, try to listen to my emotions a little bit. If I have an emotional mm. response to something, maybe there's something behind that. There's a part of my story that, that connects with that. And so that little boy that was, is protecting himself and a lot of these boisterous actions, um, I, it rang true for me and, and it, it led me to tears immediately. So I, I, I think those are some of my reflections after reading that. Mm. Mm. That's really powerful. You just, you just actually gave us a, a perfect description of uh, what might be an eight's narrative, you mm -hmm. know, uh, what it is that um, helped develop the veil of their particular personality type, you know. So, uh, Tori, what words come to mind when you think of Andre as an eight? <laughs> um, I think strength is the first word it's so it's so interesting too because i mean you can't tell because he's sitting down but andre's six six right six six i yeah. think he's about six <laughs> and he's he's got like a very big build so it's just it's it's kind of crazy as you know it's not always the case of course but even physically he kind of like has that eight thing of just like power and strength and um leadership i think of when i think of him and i i really do think that andre i've seen uh i've seen him grow into like when i when i think of andre as an eight i think of like a healthy eight when i when i read <laughs> you know the the um chapter about about eights and i actually just based on what you were saying real quick i i never forget that moment when he was saying he cried reading that chapter because that was when i first introduced him to the enneagram and i had been talking about it a little bit i was like come on you just have to like just like read this chapter, like I'll read it out loud to you. Like I promise it's, it's you to the T. He didn't even take the test or anything. I was like, I know you're an eight. <laughs> and, and I 
was just like, we're going to read this chapter together. And as we started reading it, we both were just like in tears because I think it was just this eye opening moment um, and just this really vulnerable moment. But yeah, I mean, obviously you have you have your moments give them, just give like them an I have annoying, my moments. An annoying part of the, uh, the yeah, the annoying part. I think the confrontation for sure is something that I uh, I struggle with, and I'm sure you guys relate to that as, <laughs> as you know. For is I think it, it's just so funny because I th- the, it's just the statement opposites attract. I think is so true in our situation because when I read like the four and the eight, I was like, whoa, like this is crazy, like just what was one of the things was I think struggling with being insensitive was for you and then my struggle being too sensitive and I was like Mm -hmm. wow that's Mm -hmm. so we both need to like come together on that but um yeah it's been I think just the Enneagram as a whole has been really helpful to even call those things out in each other Mm -hmm. where where we need help so Andre what words come to your mind when you think about Tori the four (laughs) Um, I think about emotions. It's okay to let emotions process and let them be and resist the temptation to try to give any kind of black and white reflection on what might be happening. Um, I think of um, letting her have uh, ample amounts of alone time. I don't know if the individualist (laughs) is part of the four, but I I think either her wing or the main number um there's some something in that so uh yeah being someone who takes i think it's almost threefold kind of a combo thing of her creativity her emotional depth and just this world of emotion that i'm trying to learn and become healthier in which is also a negative thing i think I mean, I'm sure both things it all can go both ways, but then also the, uh, the just the alone time. I feel like those two, those three things kind of go together and, and just allowing her to or not being overbearing. I know eights can be overbearing and I probably still fall under that category for my dear wife, but I think that uh, we're learning and, and those three things of just wanting to give her that space, but also I, there's plenty more I need to learn about, about what the four means and, what it entails and the complexities that that um, come with that, and so I, I'm just I'm just trying to educate myself further a little bit. But those three things right. come, come to mind. Yeah, you know, it's funny. Uh, fours. I I know a lot of four and eight couples, and uh, yeah, and I'm a four, and it's interesting how many eight friends I have, and I think the reason is because fours and eights are the probably the two most misunderstood numbers on the enneagram. Oh. Mm. Uh, fours, uh, we believe, are the most complex number on the Enneagram, really. J- just look at Andre. Andre's like, <laughs> <laughs> we're getting a lot of nod, man. Um, <laughs> just, just when you think you've gotten to the bottom of the well, you realize <laughs> there is no bottom to the well. I mean, there, there's, there's just stuff going on all the way through the earth, right? <laughs> uh, and, and, you know, uh, one of the things that I, I remember one of those couples said to me, they've been married for 20 years. And, and the woman said to me, it's been a 20 year long thunder and lightning storm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I just remember laughing. And the reason fours and eights can get along so well is because the four appreciates the blunt intensity mm-hmm. and authenticity of the eight. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, Fours value authenticity, and an eight is a no-nonsense, right up front, blunt person who says it like it is. And the four, even though that brings a lot of energy that might be kind of overwhelming, the four is like, I admire that. Wow. Yeah. Because it's because it's real, you know? Yeah. yeah. And I and I think that what the eight appreciates uh, uh, about the four is that they're impassioned. Mm-hmm. You know, they have all this passionate energy. And so you can see how it can create a thunder and lightning storm that has resolution because the two of you, even though you're uh, in the aggressive stance, Andre, and and Tori, you're in the withdrawing stance, after a while, that won't stick in an argument. You know what I mean? You won't keep withdrawing. You won't. Eventually, this is going to come out, you know, and and there's kind of a mutual admiration that goes on there. Is that is that been your experience a little bit? Yes. (laughs) Yes. 100%. <laughs> yeah. yeah honestly, that's, I mean, that's one of the things I've 
I've always loved about Andre that has been, I think, misunderstood um, is just that he he wears his heart on his sleeve and he ha- he has to have everything out on the table at, at all times, which is great in some situations because then I don't have to ever question what he's feeling. I don't have to question, you know, what's going on in his head. It's like everything is always kind of out in the open. If there's any sort of issue, um, you know, we're going to figure it out before the day is over. And I think at first that, that kind of scared me a little bit. Cause I'm like, eh, it's okay. We can like, you know, sleep on it or like just bury it down and I'll write a song about it later. It's fine. Um, (laughs) but, but it's been, it's been a really cool thing for me to experience just even just not being afraid of, of arguing. Cause I think that, you know, I've learned not, not all arguing is bad. In fact, it gets everything out there to where, you know, there's maybe potential for less bigger fights later. It's cause we're mm-hmm. you know, let's just work it out. Let's get it out of the way. Let's understand each other, get on the same level. And so that's, um, that's been something I really, I really like about Andre for sure. So Tori, <laughs> if, um, well, if you think about it, no two fours, experience the world in the same way, right? We're, we all are different hues and contrasts and variations on a theme called four. Mm-hmm. So if someone were to walk around in your shoes on any given day, how would they experience your fourness? Like what would your, what would it be like? <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's, that is a good question. Um, I feel like they, might be overwhelmed <laughs> because <laughs> I, I mean, I definitely experience a lot of emotions throughout one day and it can even just be for a split second, but it's very intense <laughs> for that split second. Um, and then I can be, you know, completely on another emotion. So it's kind of, it's kind of like this a lot, but um, yeah, I mean, I think, I think it would be it would be a whirlwind for sure, but I think it would also be pretty colorful in my head because I think I just I see a lot. I'm trying trying to explain this in the best way, but I think I turn to music so much because that's how I'm able to communicate. That's how I'm able to take you know that colorful world that's in my head and kind of like channel it into one thing that's easy to process for people. Um, but if, if someone listens to my music, there's definitely like way more going on, you know, from where that came from. It's not as simple as just, here's a song. That's kind of, the song is the product of me kind of like editing what's in my head Mm -hmm. and then being like, okay, here's this little glimpse into my world. So, um, yeah, I think using music is kind of the best way I think I could, I could explain, uh, the answer to that question. Yeah. You know, You really did explain something about why there is a disproportionate number of fours in the artistic world. Mm. Uh, one is, is that all fours desperately want to be understood. Yeah. Mm. It's like, I want you to understand me. I, I want you to understand what my inner experience is like. I, I want you to understand what I'm feeling, you know, uh, right. and, and how I see the world, which is frankly very different from how others see the world, which is why people who are not fours go out and buy records by people like you. Mm-hmm. Be- because for three and a half minutes, they get to see a world that they never would see otherwise. Mm-hmm. Right? Wow. Now, at the same time, and this can be the downside of the four artist, is you have so many feelings, right, mm-hmm. that you have no choice as you try to explain yourself to the world. <laughs> than to turn to another medium like music, right? Because just regular language doesn't work. It's mm-hmm. like, I, you know, just talking to me right now, I can see in your body language, you're like trying to explain it and you're, you're very animated, which also tells me you're having trouble finding the words. But if I gave you, if I gave you a microphone <laughs> and three and a half minutes. <laughs> yeah. Right? So you, you kind cool. of you just so beautifully explained that I think and why we have and and also the danger right which is that mm. there are so many great artists who had so many feelings that they could it became so intense for them and no art could possibly release it all that they kind of self destruct 
Yeah. Mm, you know, and that's the, that's the danger side, right? Mm -hmm. Is too many feelings, not, not enough art to get it all out. And then they just kind of, uh, cave in on on themselves so now Andre same question to you I get a day in your shoes man you're an eight uh, how would I experience the world how would I see it what 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 would the world be like for me yeah you would uh, have to fight against all the things you think you know <laughs> uh, all the black and white um, things you think you know, especially as a married man. I think my world as an eight has changed a lot as a married man compared to the college student who's going to practice because you're allowed to be insulated in your own head and your roommate is doing his thing, I'm doing my thing. We might get an argument over how the trash needs to be taken out, but that's about it. And then I can express myself the way I just know how in my day as a single guy. But now as a married man, I think or even just as a hopefully a little bit more mature guy, just taking other people in consideration. Just having the information I have now is, is a, a great attempt to, like I said, kind of back away from all the answers you think you know, open yourself up to a world that, um, that you might not understand. And one of those is, is a progressive growing understanding of my wife's <laughs> inner life. Um, and... <clears throat> And also, I mean, by nature, though, just I think I find myself achievement oriented. I usually feel much better after I've gotten uh, one box checked for my workout of the day. And I feel like I give myself a pass to to allow to explore other things. So it's very structured, sort of trying to um, figure out how to feel good about what I accomplished that day. And, and the flip side of that is also sort of going into maybe uh, an unhealthy space when I don't feel like I've accomplished what I need to accomplish to feel like I can pat myself on the back, as strange as that sounds. Um, and I don't know how much of that relates to an eight. That, that's probably where I would pose a question to you guys more, but it's, it's, it's one of the two. It's, it's me feeling really good about the things I've accomplished and trying to healthily open myself up to a world that I don't yet understand and grow and learn or it's me resorting to uh, just you know playing video games for too long one day and eating too much food and not really thinking deeply about anything because I'm sort of blocking it out almost in a way being too hard on myself um, by that response of just sort of trying to block all those things out but th that's kind of a a pendulum of my days that uh, mm. at surface level. Well, it's not good for an eight to be bored. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I, I oftentimes say that, you know, an eight who gets bored is you got to be careful. It's like they'll eat your house down to the studs. You know? <laughs> they, they, they can get real ornery and st all that. You have more energy than any other number on the Enneagram. That's why his wing is a seven too. So that's oh, like, and you're the yeah. most reckless combination. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you were if you were an eight, an eight with a nine would be a whole different thing, man. But 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 seriously, like you you have to be doing something. You are in that doing triad, and of all those numbers in there, you have to be doing something pretty much all the time, or you can you know, start to drive into some of your darker places, you know, mm -hmm. either towards yourself or, or expressing uh, maybe uh, frustration with other people, you mm -hmm. know, and, and also a sense of purposelessness. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, we, like, what am I doing, right? What yeah. am I, what yeah. am I doing with my life, you know? Um, so, uh, Andre, I'm going to stick on you for a second, okay? Um, because you're an unusual eight. As mm -hmm. I talk to you, I'm picking this up. And so I'm going to put on my therapist hat for a second. Uh, so Tori just said about you that you wear your heart on your sleeve. And what I noticed very quickly in this interview was how quickly you began to talk about feelings and emotions. Mm -hmm. And then you said at one point, uh, I started getting my own, my own, get in touch with my own emotions, but that's a whole story of its own. <laughs> okay, so what was that story? 
Yeah, I think I think emotionally there's some damage that I I'm trying to recover from. And I don't know if it has some so much to do with emotionally be being damaged, maybe in part, but by others I mean, or if it has to do with uh just the the way my life sort of panned out and how I became someone someone who had any kinds of conviction at all was later in life after a season where I felt like I drove my life to the ground and damaged a lot of other people just in lawless, I mean, complete lawlessness, no conviction, no, I had a lot of, uh, I had a lot of freedom to kind of do whatever I want. I was put in places through basketball to sort of have the ability to, to, to make decisions that were detrimental to others. And so out of that becoming a Christian, for me, the answers, the black and whiteness of life, some of the things that I could hold on to um, in, in, a, in, a, in a total way, I think I, I grabbed them like this. And, and emo- it's actually interesting because, you know, the head and the heart and that relationship and how that works um, is, is something that, that that's what I'm, I think, getting at and exploring my emotional life. Because for the last... I'd say uh, seven, eight years before I before I got married, and the reason I keep saying before I got married, it's because it's really caused me to self reflect more and wanting to be the best person I can be. Um, <clears throat> but before that time, I think it was just so easy for me to take my emotions, say that they don't align with some kind of truth that I believe, and therefore push them away. And I, I don't think it's just since I'd become a man of conviction it's also when I was an athlete who was trying to finish the 40 yard dash and I had 10 yards to go you you don't deal with how you want to quit (laughs) if you want if you if you have the desire to stop um I have a coach in the back of my ear saying don't (laughs) punk and it's a colorful language don't you quit and so uh, emotions to me became became sort of obstacles to remove a lot of my life. And I, I, that's the way I looked at them. And I think that there is still something to say about um, um, preventing going into despair by, by holding on to truth and, and, and holding tight to things that you might not feel. Um, and, and I don't want to move all the way away from that. But I, I definitely feel like the last couple years, few years of my life, as it relates to my relationship with my wife and my family, um, who's dealt with me for a long time, uh, I just <clears throat> have begun this process of wanting to wanting to understand uh, complexities, wanting to understand when you know, you know, God loves you, that you people still feel insecure and people still, uh, you know, there's there's times that you don't feel lo- loved or loving, and and then the the answer is not, but you are loved, you are, you know, just push that aside. It, 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 there's there's communication that goes far beyond words and black and white ideas and uh, even a book you know not not just finding my comfort in just books um but 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 embracing sort of the gray areas of life and realizing how much of that there actually is and and even within god himself how much there's just not defined for us and and so letting go of of trying to define everything and, and realizing how, when I don't do that, I could really hurt people too. And, mm-hmm. and so love and truth go together. And so if you're just pounding something that you believe to be true, um, that's actually totally counterproductive. And yeah. <clears throat> so, I mean, I'm just, I, and I do, <laughs> and I do feel like when I say exploring that emotional life, I, I do still feel like a little kid who's never been to Disneyland, but he keeps hearing people talk about it <laughs> and like wanting to just get further into it. So I'm no expert by any stretch, even <laughs> in two years, but I don't think I'll ever be that in this side of uh, heaven, maybe, <laughs> but I'm, right. I'm just trying to grow. You know, it's uh, what's so interesting about what you just said is that um, I've oftentimes said to eights, you know, gray is a color. <laughs> you know? And, and, you know, Tori actually will really help you with that because for fours, it's all about the gray. Right. It's all about nuance. It's, it's all about mystery. 
It's all about um, the things we don't understand. That's much more interesting to her than to you. I mean, you know, uh, the question, not the answer, is much more interesting to her, right? Yeah. Uh, so, Tori, I, I want to start, you all know Eugene Peterson. The, the, yep. the, right, of course you do, right? So, you know, he, he wrote the message translation of the Bible. He wrote a bunch of really great books. He was a great thinker. And uh, a friend of mine named Jill Phillips uh, one time uh, was with Eugene Peterson, and she, she asked him, what, what do you think is uh, most dangerous for the human soul? And without stopping, he went, celebrity. Mm. Wow. So what I want to ask you as a four then, who is in the realm of celebrity, Wow. How have you navigated the dangers of fame? Well, well, I, <clears throat> my, my mind immediately goes to my face because that's really the only thing that, you know, speaking of just hard truths to hold on to, I think you know, I, I was, I was raised, um, you know, in a, a Christian family and that's something that I've always just anchored myself to is, you know, knowing that I'm loved by, by Christ. And like, like Andre was saying, there's, there's, you know, of course times that we don't feel that way. Um, and there's so, so many, you know, things that, that come with that. But I think always knowing that that's there and that's something that has grounded me basically my whole life. I mean, I don't, I don't really know what else to credit other than that, to be honest, because it, it you're right. It is, a, it is a really scary, dangerous world. And I, I think I can see how, um, you know, how I, I, I could easily, you know, let myself fall into different temptations and just the, the whole world of, of celebrity, like you said, is, is just, it's so foreign, I think. Like even, even for me, it's like, I've, 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 I'm in it, but at the same time, I, I feel like I'm also out of it. Like, I feel like I'm also able to kind of look at it from afar. Cause I've always just felt like, like a, a normal girl. And I'm like, what is, what is this thing like called fame? I just love to sing. And this is this, mm -hmm. you know, thing that kind of came with it. Um, my goal was never to be famous you know I, I was never like oh when i grow up i want to be famous i now i did have a goal of wanting as many people as possible to hear my music um but i think as i got older i realized that that you know obviously comes with um more of a spotlight sometimes a spotlight that you might not want and i think even just going back to uh to wow well, losing my train of thought to, to the four and, and, you know, how I think reading about how fours are, um, often withdrawn and, and, you know, not, not all the time are shy, but I, I'm definitely like a shot, more of a shy four, I guess. Um, and you know, we've, we've talked about, uh, how it's just interesting that me as a shy person have kind of been given this spotlight so it's like I feel like I'm constantly fighting it in a way where I'm mm. like okay this is cool I love singing like hi guys I love you guys so much I'll put on my kind of performer hat but then I'm like okay I'm I need my time I need my space I don't want to be in the spotlight all the time so um I don't know if that's maybe helped kind of keep my head on straight a little bit too is just constantly like sort of uh balancing those two desires um and I think that might actually be where my, when I read the chapter on the three that I, I really related to a lot of that as well. So I think I'm, I'm kind of like in the middle somewhere, but um, yeah, it's just interesting. The four I was, I was going to ask, <clears throat> it's, it's, all, it's always appeared to me that Tori's life would be an utter, utter disaster for me. <laughs> that particular thing of celebrity that you're talking about. Uh, I just not, I'm not sure how I would reel in my ego or reel in my, I, I, I'm just, I'm just not, I'm glad that that sort of, and even with per, 
playing basketball a little bit, there's it's sort of capped off in a small sense and capped off early. And now I've been watching Tori feeling like she was made for this in, in a certain way. And I always, I always was curious about why that is the case, but I do, I do wonder, and I, I, I want to ask if a four might be sort of a good number for anyone to test that sort of life out because there is this desire to retreat. There is this desire to want to close the doors and get a breather. Whereas for me, the breather and wa wanting to feel rest is in front of a crowd of people. <laughs> That's for me. Right. Exactly. But for her, it just seems to be, um, I need a, I need a break. And, and, and I wonder if that actually helps with the challenge of, of, of any human being elevated above the rest. Um, and, and, and I, I, I will want to ask that question too, obviously reflecting on what Tori said first, but. Well, reflecting is a good word. I think that, uh, uh, fours are naturally self-reflective people. Um, they have a very rich interior dialogue, right? There's a conversation going on between themselves and the world all the time, you know, and they ask very existential questions like, who am I? Why are we here? What's the meaning of this suffering? Uh, how do I uh, bring consolation to a dark world, you know, and they're very comfortable talking about um, things that other people are not comfortable talking about. You know, it's like, let me just tell you the truth. Let me just tell you how it is. Um, and, and, you know, sometimes it can be very forceful. I think about an artist like Patti Smith, you know, who was like the godmother of punk music and clearly a four, you know what I mean? Like, but intense, like bringing it out, super intense. And then I think of artists like Joni Mitchell, who I think is a four, who's very, has this very withdrawn kind of uh, personality. And so I think the alone time that, that fours need at, at times is, uh, to to draw back and and to kind of process a lot of these questions and thoughts and then that's what creates great music that's mm -hmm. that's what creates great ballet that's what creates great you know works of visual art and architecture you know all those things but but there is there is we are in the withdrawing stance I mean we we pull back like if there's conflict I I tend to pull back. Like I don't rush forward into contact. I tend to kind of back up a little bit. It doesn't mean that I won't later on come out and, and speak my piece, but my initial like reaction is to go inside myself, mm -hmm. not, not to come out of myself. You're, as an eight, your first impulse is to go outside yourself and go at the source of danger. Yeah. You know what I mean? To confront the, the, the force of danger. Me, it's sort of like, okay, this may be danger, but I may have to come back and, you know, yeah. after I've had, had a chance to, yeah. to do stuff. But, Process. you know, four, fours are sensitive people. She, she's, Tori's lucky to have an eight in her life that, that is a, uh, I would say what I feel from you is that you're not as, as a young man, you, you, you may have been a challenger, but maybe as you've matured, the word for you would be protector or defender. Mm -hmm. oh, I would I agree know. with that. Yeah. yeah. I think yeah, I, I think I try to reel the challenger in, being aware of it. Yeah, let's yeah. not let's not pretend it's still it's still there it's for still sure. There. <laughs> <laughs> but definitely just, the protector. I was yeah. just thinking <laughs> of a scene last week when we were both in the car and someone cut cut us off and how we both responded very Oh my gosh, to that. we did, yes. Uh, I would have, but I tell the story, we gotta hear there's it. There's so many little stories. Yeah, so, yeah, there's the, it was one of my worst days, um, worser days, but I got, I got uh, cut off and honked at, and so I was like, well, there's a red light, we can talk about this. <laughs> I'll just yeah. put it in the most PG terms I can. <laughs> But, but I was I, I started to speed up and switch lanes to go next to this person and, and sort of talk about what has just happened. And, uh, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> just to, we got to put a lot of air quotes in here, man. I just felt it was important to talk about what just happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there was definitely still hope for for 
a peaceful uh, <laughs> succession. But but I had a piece to say, and and uh, yeah, I mean, kind of what you expect. I she like, no. she she felt increasingly threatened by by my miles per hour increasing. So the faster <laughs> I went, the 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 larger her fear grew, and it ended up in a conversation, a, a pretty actually I, we never got to talk to the person honking yeah. because we actually got into a more fiery discussion <laughs> <laughs> about me putting my wife in danger and what if we had kids why would you want to risk it all and I, I really should know better uh because my challenging confrontation has also led to some pretty important lessons for me on backing off of those things but but yeah um she was right <laughs> in that <Thanks>. situation <laughs> and i was wrong and uh and we thankfully didn't have to have a conversation with I was the person. Just, <laughs> I mean, I was up. scared about the other guy too. I was like, we don't know this person. Like, You're right. uh, you know, You're we'll, absolutely just right. let him go. <laughs> let him be. Yeah. But, well, chances are he's not 6'6", six, six, Tori. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel very protected. Oh, no, it ended well. It, it didn't involve handcuffs. So that's a good yeah. thing, you yeah. know. Okay. That's Anthony, Anthony, you've got a look on your face like you got a question. I can tell. Yeah. Um, so you, you, I think you answered really well when you were talking about um, how actually being a four helps you navigate celebrity, you know, being in that withdrawing stance and helps you withdraw and, and feed your soul. How um, does being a four help you or hinder you in the creative process? Mm. That's, that's a really good question as well. You guys have great questions, I must say. Um, <laughs> it's making me think about stuff that I don't usually think about. I think... In my creative process, I mean, it's something I loved about your book, Ian, is that it's like the same, those same strengths that we all have can also be our weaknesses. Mm -hmm. And so I think my ability to withdraw and kind of, you know, ha process things, I, I, I just, even in some of our arguments, it's like, I... I resonated with another thing you said in your book, um, which is, you know, I feel like I have to gather all of my emotions before I act. Mm. And that's not, that hasn't really been a good thing for me all the time. Sometimes it has. I think, I think with my, with my art, um, it can be a good thing, but um, just, you know, being able to kind of sit alone and process all the feelings and then be like, okay, boom, let's, you know, create something out of this. But in, in real life, I guess it's, it hasn't been a good thing because it's like, I, you know, sometimes need to just say what I'm feeling or, or try to think a little more black and white about the situation. And that's actually helped. Um, I don't know if this is really answering your question, but I'm just thinking about um, just, you know, between Andre and I, there have definitely been times where I, this is post learning about the Enneagram too. So I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to test this out. Okay. And we were, we were arguing. I don't know if you remember this. We were, we were arguing about something and I, um, I was, you know, tempted to do my usual, like freak out over, you know, maybe the loudness of his voice and just, he has, he has like, he always has like really good points and he's like, <laughs> you know, checking all the boxes and I'm just like, yeah, I get all that, but, and, and, you know, trying, so I could feel myself, getting emotional and sort of starting to freak out to where I can't really hear my own thoughts anymore. And, um, I stopped and I was like, you know what, Tori, <laughs> try to think just black and white about this. Like think of that, think about the situation. Don't let your emotions get involved. And I sort of just explained, you know, how I felt in a very black and white way, like very clear you um, force with force. Yeah. And he like, and it, and, from the outside looking in it probably looked like a pretty heated discussion but like right when I was just really clear with him he stopped and I'll never forget and he was like you have you have a point that's yeah okay I'm I, I was wrong and he just <laughs> it's just crazy because he's so he can so quickly just admit that he's wrong if you present you know 
this is, this is what I think you did and, and this and that. And he's not always wrong, of course, but that was just one of the situations where I'm like, whoa, like, and I still, I remember like still feeling like my heart rate was really going really fast. And I was like, wait, that's it. Okay. Um, and I think that's kind of similar to the story too, that you wrote about in, in the book of just, you know, confronting your friend and, and like, oh, okay, that's all, I guess we can move on now. But um, that was the first time I did that. And, you know, I don't always do that very well, but I would just say to sort of answer your question, I think me getting overwhelmed and, um, just sometimes letting my emotions and my feelings even lie to me, um, and kind of go down that road, uh, is where I think I can get in trouble sometimes, even, even in my art, you know, overthinking things and, um, instead of just like sticking to my gut, like even when it comes to like a, a melody or, you know, like little things, I'll just, I can sometimes get so like obsessed and I sometimes I need to just take a step back and be like, do I like this? Okay. I like this. So that was kind of a lot of answers in one, but That's I don't great. know. So there's a couple, yeah, there's a couple of things I'm thinking in your answer. I have, I have a ton of questions, but like I would be making a record for instance, this speaks to the creative process and somebody would be like, geez, you, you have to have this absolutely right. And I was like, what are you talking about? Doesn't or it have to be perfect? And I was like, it doesn't have to be perfect. Like, I love the flaws, you know, like, like the, the little pieces that aren't just right. You know, it, it's where some of the magic and the mystery is, but I am pushing for this ideal. You know, I have this, I have this thing in my mind and it's almost unattainable. You know? Yes. Yeah. And, well, and it is unattainable. It is unattainable. It is. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, go ahead. Ian. This is where fours and ones sometimes get confused. Mm -hmm. um, next to ones, fours, I think, have the loudest inner critic, right? We have a very active inner critic. Uh, I could get off of this. Like, I'll give you an example. I can walk off a stage after speaking to a large group of people. And before I even hit the stairs on the side of the stage, I have already named eight things I did wrong. <laughs> you know? And it's like, wh why would you do this for a living if this is what it costs? You know, <laughs> you know, it's like, this is insane, right? Because the difference is, is that the, the one is looking for perfection and the, the, the four is looking for the ideal. Mm. They're, they're looking for some perfect ideal in the universe that they want to attain, achieve, but it's unattainable. Mm -hmm. So actually, inside of the four, there is this constant pursuit of the unavailable, the unattainable, the mm -hmm. unnameable. And that's what gives them that angst kind of quality, that kind of, mm, and that's why, <clears throat> why fours are not hard to disappoint. You know what I'm saying? Like fours get, oh, look at your face. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, four, fours are not hard to disappoint or? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We're not hard to disappoint. Yeah. Because things yeah. don't live up to our ideal. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Songs don't, people don't. <laughs> I, I would add too, I would add, and, and this is kind of a, a question too. You said fours aren't hard to disappoint, but I, I find that, uh, may, and maybe this is the four kind of projecting onto other people, but I, I'm scared to disappoint other people. Oh, yeah. like, I feel like I'm always like I'm super sensitive to like what he thinks because I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm going to disappoint him. Mm -hmm. And that's probably me projecting, you know, that, that idealism yeah. in myself too. Well, did you know that the defense mechanism of fours is called projection? Oh, oh wow. <laughs> Actually, oh, I'm sorry. That's <laughs> a, of, of sixes. Oh. But for fours have a tendency to, uh, for example, when a four walks into a room where there's a lot of negative energy, you know that feeling? You just walk in and you can feel it, right? Fours sometimes will automatically assume that it's their fault. And they just walked into the room. Mm -hmm. Like they just yep. take it on themselves. Like somehow or another, I'm responsible for what's gone wrong here. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's, it's, um, uh, it's not unusual for fours to do that. And I think um, what fours have to be careful of is r realizing that the unattainable, the unachievable, they, they, they have to learn how to accept the fact that sometimes the ordinary is extraordinary. Mm -hmm. Yes. The ordinary yeah. is extraordinary. Sometimes just washing the dishes is not a pedestrian act. 
yeah. but it can be a but it can be a sacred act. Wow. That's you know. So uh, all right. So here's how I love to. to I mean, I could do this. To, this is a this is a great conversation. I love both of you already, but oh. I gotta close. I gotta close this baby Thank up. You. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. We don't want this. We don't want this to turn into a Wagner opera. Um, so, <laughs> so here's a question for you, Andre. What do you know about Tori that you wish she knew and believed about herself, but she doesn't? Hmm. Mm. Which one? <laughs> <laughs> That's think, hard. That's a hard question. I think uh yeah. I guess it has to do with the internal external um situation. I I, I think sometimes there's things brewing inside that that weren't caused by anything external but i mean i feel like you know that so one thing that you don't well it can still be i mean it's i'm just thinking of some convers some really healing conversations that we've had yeah i think her voice is just so much more powerful than she thinks aside Mm. from her singing voice Mm. i think she's learning to try to uh believe that and just a really short sentence like of, of something that she would say that's not a song or a lyric um, can be just as powerful in some cases as, 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 as something that she's been doing her whole life, which is uh, inspiring and, and hitting people emotionally with singing and lyrics. Yeah. But um, I just really think Tori has, has a whole world outside of music where a voice is really powerful and Mm -hmm. and uh i think she underestimates that i think she's hesitant to want to dive deeper into to that and 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 i mean when it comes to her music and her her notes and and, i mean she strives and strives and strives i think because there's a level of also belief and self uh confidence that she carries into that world and 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 i see just such a such a similar um, um, potential for 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 her 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 words and conversation towards people. Mm-hmm. I, I've already benefited so much from it when because she she tends to allow herself to do it in the safety of her home, obviously more than towards other people. So I'm privileged and blessed to to get to see some of that more than others. But I I think there's a lot to be seen from from a lot more people or a lot to be. Uh, I'm gleaned and benefited from from her her voice as as just someone who has her thoughts to offer to people. Mm. Thanks, Tori. Tori, <laughs> on a, I hope I hope you heard that and that that uh-huh. was able to to really sort of seep in, you know, because yeah. four, fours don't always do a good job of letting that stuff seep in too mm-hmm. deeply. So I'm going to end with this question, Tori. What is it that you wish Andre knew and believed himself? Uh, about himself, uh, but he doesn't, you know, that you really yeah. wish he knew and believed about himself. Well, I'll say, I'll say to, to what Andre said, I'll probably, I'll probably be processing that and then I'll like really feel it like next week and then I'll start crying <laughs> randomly and he'll be like, why are you crying? And I'm like, that thing he said last, last week. week. <laughs> yeah. But um, anyway, yeah, I think, I think for Andre, and this is something, you know, I think you guys I'm sure have, have noticed that he's, he is, uh, you know, getting more comfortable with. And like you said, he's more open to, but I think he's, I don't think he's fully, fully believe that your vulnerability, um, is really powerful and really beautiful and isn't a weakness. Um, and I think that's something yeah, that when I when I have seen you know those moments where you know I have seen him cry or um, you know you can just tell that something's really going on internally and he'll open up about it. I think, um, yeah, I just I I would just want you to know that that's 
that's a really beautiful and powerful thing because, um, yeah, I know that's not always the easiest thing, you know, for you to do. And there, because of, you know, things in, in his childhood and, and just the way that he, uh, was shaped, um, and is still, you know, of course he's still growing and, and, uh, becoming an amazing young man. Can you say young? Yeah, you're young for sure. (laughs) 30 already. Yeah. (laughs) Um, no, but yeah, I just think, I think that's something I just see as such a, is such an awesome quality and I wouldn't want you to see that as weak. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and also, I think also, I don't think you fully believe what an amazing uh, leader you are too. Mm-hmm. And just like from, as someone on the outside, like I've seen so many people um, just even the way they talk to him, like how they just, they look up to him and, you know, people at, at church and youth group. And um, I think you sometimes question that. And so I guess I would just want to say that as well, that you're just people, I think really, really value what you have to say and value your opinion, including myself. And, um, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sure there's more things, but we're going to go cry now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is like therapy right now. <laughs> yeah, I know. So, so uh, Tori, do you have new music coming soon? Um, well, it actually, yeah, well, yes is the answer to that question, but it kind of depends on when people are watching this because there's definitely stuff coming out. Um, yeah, if it's not already out, then it is coming. So. <laughs> well, we can't wait. Uh, we can't wait. Andre, tell us a little bit about you. I've been working on writing a little bit of the story, particularly the main point of it being um, em- embracing actually the uh, the 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 emotional side of being a man and 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 being okay with that because so much of my life and narrative was being a man and in a military and athletic sort of lenses uh and there wasn't a lot of room for vulnerability in that so uh, i i i've been i'm not sure if it will be a book or a more of a blog or more of thoughts that 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 are more isolated and and, and trying to figure out where to express those or share those. But uh, as for now, I'm working on that. I, I had my basketball career end a couple years ago. And so I've been doing a lot of things, helping out with what Tori's got going on. But those are some of the things that I'm working on on my own. So, Well, man, I hope you do that because I, one of the, so if anger is the deadly sin or the passion, uh, of a lot well if lust let's say is the pen is the passion of the eight right and you have this anger thing right you just you kind of radiate uh mm-hmm. energy that feels like anger oftentimes it's not it's just intensity mm-hmm. right it's just passion and intensity mm-hmm. that other people read as yeah. anger mm-hmm. but it really isn't right um but <clears throat> you all tend to confuse vulnerability with weakness Mm. and if for you to write to people about hey it's okay for men for you your journey of learning uh, a broader bigger uh, vocabulary uh, emotional vocabulary and and to really live into that idea that when i am weak that's when i am strong you, you know, that's like that to me is the when you meet a Nate who has figured that out, it's like, wow, mm. that is really, really powerful. Mm-hmm. So you all, would you come on again? I would love it. That'd be great. Yes. <laughs> we'll do part two at that some point. Great. Seems like we need some more time. I know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I we do. There's so stop. much. Yeah. There's so much. <laughs> well, peace to both of you and typology listeners. Remember the words of the great Oscar Wilde. Be yourself. Everybody else is already taken. Mm. Nice. Until next time.